in the mining industry. Unlocking the minerals and aggregates of the earth takes a lot of work. Man, heavy equipment, and machinery work side by side to harness raw materials. Whether by day or working by night, the mining process requires the utmost in caution and safety. Conveyor belts, loadout bins, silos, processing vessels, and a variety of other locations may require that you have to work in a confined space. It's safe to say that most miners will at some point be exposed to the dangers of working in a confined space. You should never underestimate the potential hazards confined spaces can create. Recent studies done by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health show that there are relatively few incidents related to confined spaces, but when one does occur, it's likely to be a tragedy. For instance, during one particular period, there were 80 incidents involving hazardous atmospheres in confined spaces. 78 deaths resulted. During the same time period, there were 38 cases of fire and explosion while people were working in or near a confined space. From those 38 tragedies, 47 deaths occurred. You and all other miners need to understand the seriousness of the hazards posed by confined spaces and the need for safe working procedures in and around confined spaces. That's why you're watching this video, to understand and to use safe working procedures when it comes to confined space entry. What is a confined space? According to IMSHA, a confined space generally is defined as an area which has four features. It is not designed for continuous worker occupancy. It has limited openings for entry and for exit. It may have an unfavorable atmosphere due to poor natural ventilation. Its size and shape or its use may degrade the air quality, expose workers to engulfment or other injuries. Here are some common examples of confined spaces in the mining work environment. Bins, silos, tank cars, tank trucks, culverts, sewers, sumps, spillways, dragline tubs, and excavations. Nearly any space can become dangerous because of heat, poisonous or explosive vapors, lack of oxygen, or moving parts, and must be considered as a confined space. So how do we work safely in or around the confined space? First, survey your work areas with a specific eye on confined spaces and ask yourself these three questions. Could the air quality in or near the space cause ill health or death? Could a worker be covered up with loose sliding material like sand, phosphate, or gravel, or perhaps drown? And what about the dangers of temperature extremes, explosion hazards, moving parts, or electrical hazards? A very simple solution to the problem of confined spaces is to ask yourself, can we do this work in some way from the outside? But if one must enter a confined space, certain guidelines have to be followed. Now this video can't cover all situations for every company or group of workers, so please, Become familiar with the confined space rules where you work. Here are some suggested guidelines that should be considered for your confined space safety plan. It's a good idea to have a formalized safe work permit system. This system is a set of written procedures which establishes how certain work can be done in confined spaces. This permit would always be used when hot work is done in or near confined spaces. 
When filled out properly, these permits become a written approval and show that hazards have been evaluated and precautions have been taken to ensure a safe work site. Here are some elements of a safe work permit. Results of atmospheric testing. Date and time of work and expiration time of permit. Names of all people entering the confined space and names of people who are outside monitoring. A brief description of the work being done and procedures being used. Approval by a supervisor. The permit posted at the immediate work site. In addition to a safe work permit procedure, these elements are also important. Employees need to be adequately trained to recognize the dangers of confined spaces and specifically briefed before entry. Contractors are to work according to the rules of the operator's permit system and be briefed by a contact person. If the confined space needs added lighting, workers should have safe backup lighting consisting of 12 volt lighting or 120 volt lighting using a dedicated ground fault circuit interrupter. Tools and equipment should be safe. Only low voltage tools if possible should be used. Approved lockout procedures must be followed and non-sparking equipment should be used. Clean out vessels. Isolate incoming lines or conveyors by locking out and if necessary, force ventilate. Atmospheric testing equipment should be in proper working condition and calibrated correctly and frequently. Don't ever try to improve ventilation by using oxygen and always recognize the potential for heat stress. When anyone is in a confined space, an attendant must be outside, properly trained and equipped, ready to assist. That attendant must be able to communicate with those inside. Emergency rescue procedures must be formalized and safety equipment dedicated to the rescue must be present. In this video, we've defined and demonstrated what is meant by a confined space and the potential hazards they can create. We've suggested methods and procedures of ensuring complete safety when confined spaces must be in. But no system, no piece of equipment, no permit or rule can ever replace your good judgment when it comes to working safely in and around confined spaces. Zero fatalities remains the goal of our mining community. With your understanding and wholehearted cooperation, that goal can be reached. Remember, who is ultimately responsible for your own health and safety? You bet, it's you.